Good evening and welcome to the White House. Every week we invite people around the country to get online and join us for a live chat. And today we're so pleased to be joined by Pete Souza, who's the Chief Official White House Photographer and Director of the White House Photography Office. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. For the past couple of days, we've been collecting your questions on Flickr, uh, on the White House Flickr photo stream. We've gotten tons of great questions. There's also a live chat that's happening right now on Facebook. If you go to whitehouse.gov slash live, there's a link to jump into the Facebook discussion and we'll be taking your questions live. So without further ado, we want to get to as many of your questions as we can. I am going to jump uh, right into your questions. Um, so the first one comes from Flickr, uh, Flickr member Dubtastic. And uh, Dubtastic wants to know, not quite sure how best to word it, but I'm looking for your thoughts and perspective on, in quote, getting the shot while being in sometimes challenging locations with very important people. Meaning, are you comfortable getting in the way or do you try to stay invisible? Well, I try to stay out of the way as much as I can. I mean, I think by now, after doing this for two years, uh, both the president and the staff are very used to me being around. And, you know, if I'm crawling around on my knees in the Oval Office or whatever, it's pretty much expected at this point. So usually it's not, that's not an issue for me. Uh, this is another question from Flickr. Uh, Summer Spot wants to know, or it says, hi again, Pete. Uh, your photos provide an unprecedented degree of transparency. How does the selection and approval process work for the photos we get to see on Flickr? So that's a good question. Um, we, we try to post a new batch of photos on Flickr every two weeks. Alice Gabriner is the photo editor, White House photo editor, and she makes the initial selection, which I sometimes refine. Um, and then we, we show those to Josh Ernest and, and the press office, and he just takes a quick look. And I'd say 98% of the pictures that Alice and I come up with are, are the ones that, that make it uh, on Flickr. Then occasionally we use Flickr as a, as a, as a way to re release a daily photo. For instance, when the president was having his Afghanistan meetings leading up to his decision on uh, the, the new strategy in Afghanistan, we would release a photo you know, within a couple hours after the meeting on a Flickr as a way for publications, the, the TV networks, and, and other people to be able to see the photo almost uh, instantaneously. Okay, we've got a question that's come in live from the chat. If you're just joining us, go to whitehouse.gov slash live. You can jump into the Facebook discussion. We've got a lot of good questions coming in for you. This one comes from Scott Knutson, and he wants to know, how often do you plan a shot in advance, and how often do you just do it on the fly? Um, again, another good question. I'd say, you know, 99% uh, of the pictures I take are, uh, are on the fly. I mean, I, I know when a meeting is going to happen most of the time, but in terms of how it's all going to unfold, it's, it's pretty much done uh, on the fly. There are exceptions. For instance, when uh, we did our official cabinet photo, um, really the whole team led by uh, Chuck Kennedy worked for weeks planning out uh, that particular photo. But again, that was a little different because it was a, it was a, 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 a set up uh, group photo with, you know, that was lit. Um, so much different circumstance. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, okay, we've got a question. Uh, a couple people are asking. They're photojournalism students. This one is from uh, Flickr member Stephen Masker. And we also have a Steven, uh, Stephen Masker is also in the live chat and submitted a question on Flickr. So we're going to answer it. He's working it both ways. Yeah, you know? he's, he's going to get his question answered. Uh, so Stephen wants to know, uh, I'm a senior photojournalism major graduating in May from, the uni uh, from University of North Texas in Denton, Texas. I want nothing more than to excel in photojournalism and practice persistently. What advice do you have for a senior photojournalism for senior photojournalism students preparing to graduate into an, unpre an unpredictable and perpetually transforming industry, which is photojournalism? Well, that's a good question. I mean, before I took this job, I was teaching at Ohio University, and you know, a lot of my students had the had the exact same question. Um, it's a changing market. Um, I, I I think that every photojournalism student coming out of school now has to be prepared to work as a freelancer because there's just so very few uh, staff jobs available. 
However, I would, I would also advise, if possible, to try to get a job on a small uh, newspaper where you can learn a lot just by the variety of assignments that you would get. You'd learn deadline pressure. So it, you know, if, if possible, I would, I would urge the student and other students to uh, get some good experience working at a, at a small daily newspaper. Okay, here's a question that comes from Rob Fix, uh, a Flickr member, and he wants to know, um, it would be interesting to hear your list of typical photographic considerations in order of importance when shooting, especially when in the face of a new and unfamiliar situation and surroundings. For example, considerations like composition, content, exposure, backgrounds, contrast, point of view, subject placement, etc. How do you respond to a difficult or rushed situation when one, of more, when one or more of these elements is comprised? You know, I've been doing this so long that it's, uh, it's like osmosis. I mean, I don't, that's a hard question to answer because um, it sort of just depends on the situation. I mean, I look for, you know, light and color and subject placement, all the things that the questioner asks about, and it just sort of depends on the individual situation and how it presents itself to me. Um, so that's kind of a hard question for me to answer because it's kind of all going inside my head and I'm just reacting to the, the scene in front of me trying to make an interesting picture. Okay, this question uh, just came in from the live chat on Facebook. Kayla Benker wants to know, Mr. Souza, I'm a big admirer of your work and saw your dedication when I, when I attended the president's speech at USC last week and noticed you climbing up on a ledge in order to get a different angle. And she attached a photo that she took of you. I actually saw that photo that she attached, which oh. was pretty amusing. Yeah, <laughs> I think the, the Secret Service agents are always amused by me trying to do things like that because, you know, they're always, I think, afraid I'm going to fall or, or something like that. But that was sort of an easy one. I mean, he, the president was uh, shaking hands in the crowd and everybody was reaching their hands t towards him. And right behind him was this ledge. So, you know, I just climbed up on the ledge and tried to get a, a different angle. So in, in her, her main question is, how else do you keep photos of the same man fresh, even when taking tens, more likely hundreds of thousands? Well, I think a lot of it is, I, I like to, one of the things that I like to do, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually go to a photo here to, uh, for an example, um, but I try to uh, watch how people react to him, especially when we're on the road. This is a, a, was in Normandy, and this was a, a veteran who uh, had been trying to get to, to shake hands with the president, and you don't even see the president in this photo. You just see the man reacting to um, him shaking hands. And so to me, I'm, I'm always aware of how people are reacting to him as, as another possibility for an interesting photo. Okay, here's another question that comes from Flickr. Uh, the member's name is Dwayne Rapp. And Dwayne wants to know, can you describe your workflow and how many people are involved from tripping the shutter to releasing the photo for usage on Flickr, whitehouse.gov, etc.? Um, well, I do have a staff and on any given uh, take, you know, a couple people are involved. I, um, my main responsibility is making the photographs. And then I have staff that will make sure they get properly captioned and gested into our archive system. Every photo, and this may answer another question, every photograph that, that I or my staff takes is, is saved. We don't delete anything. Um, so we save every single picture. So somebody ingests those into our archive, captions them, and um, there's not, maybe this might answer another question too. We do very little toning, just sort of your basic uh, shadows and highlights and trying to get the color temperature correct, um, but not much else beyond the, the sort of basic um, uh, things, uses of Photoshop. Uh, we don't do much. Uh, uh, toning the, beyond the basics. Um, so I don't know if that answered the question or not, but I sort of went off <laughs> on a little bit of a tangent there. Uh, this question comes from a uh, Flickr member, Picture Photography. Uh, his name is Rick, and he wants to know if you can tell him about a photograph during Obama's time as president that really stands out in your mind and explain why, i.e., your favorite image. Thank you. I, you know, I, I'm going to cop out and say I don't have a favorite image. My favorite image will be the one I take tomorrow 
because that's sort of what keeps me going is trying to come up with a, a, good, a good picture tomorrow. And I'm sort of scrolling through here and I'm just gonna random, not randomly, but I'm gonna you know, show one, you know, maybe one of my uh, favorites, just so you can, uh, let's see, I'll go with uh, this one, just because it's a little bit unusual. But this was a, a day when um, I was, um, let's see, oh, hang on a second here, I'm having a little bit of, there we go. Um, I was sitting outside the Oval Office and the President's daughter, daughter uh, Sasha, came by and, and started sneaking into the, the back door of the Oval Office. And the President was at the desk talking with uh, his, his personal secretary, neither one of whom saw Sasha. And Sasha was kind of creeping up behind the sofa. And here you see her, Katie now, the secretary has left the office and, and Sasha is all the way to the edge of the sofa and the president's working at the desk and at the very last minute, she jumped up and you know, tried to scare him and he basically, you know, as he said later, well, you know, Sasha can't really scare anybody. But to me, that was such a funny picture uh, and, and it just, you know, it, and I think it shows a lot about this presidency where you have these two young girls that are always around. And so, you know, he is a father, but he's the president. So, so, so this is one of the pictures that I sort of like because of that. Um, so the next question comes from Steve Rhodes of, uh, on Flickr. And Steve wants to know, how is it different working in the Obama White House from the Reagan White House? So just as a, as a little bit of an introduction, I, I worked as a, as a junior White House photographer during uh, the Reagan administration when I was 12. I was 12 at the time. And um, so, I mean, I think the big difference is that the technology is completely different. I mean, we were shooting film then and now everything is digital. Um, President Reagan was like almost 50 years older than me and now I'm a few years older than the current president. This president's a lot younger than President Reagan. So those are the sort of differences that I see. Okay, uh, this question comes from Annabella is United on Flickr and she wants to know, hi Mr. Souza, how are you doing? I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah. She's a second part to her question. Oh, okay. So. Uh, what does it feel like to photograph such an important time in U.S. history? Um, you know, I don't necessarily have a chance to sit down at the end of the day and, and, and uh, sort of reflect like that. I mean, um, it, I certainly realize the importance of, of this particular presidency um, but I'm so focused on, on, on just trying every day to make interesting pictures that I sort of haven't really had time to, to you know, totally reflect on the, the significance of, of what I'm doing. I mean, at some point in time that will, that will happen, but now I'm just so focused on every day making sure that I'm, I'm trying to make interesting pictures. Now I will say that as the uh, back in, I sort of like lose track of time, but I think it was in March when the Health Care Reform Act passed. I mean those last few days as they were uh, getting close to the number of votes that they needed, I mean that really, you really felt the sense of, of history uh, on, on those last few days. Uh, if you're just joining us, go to whitehouse.gov slash live. There's a live chat that's happening on Facebook and I encourage you to get in there and ask your questions for Pete. We have one that just came in from Nolan Hausler, and Nolan asks, does the president ever ask you to get a certain shot? Uh, you know, not really. I mean, um, he, uh, uh, like I said, he's so used to me being around that, uh, like I think sometimes he doesn't even, he sort of forgets that I'm in the room. Um, and so he's not, he, he I mean, there's been a, oh, I, here's one that just came up the other day, and, I, and I, I, we don't even have uh, that on the screen yet because it just happened, but he, we were in, uh, I'm trying to think where we were, because, oh, we were in Portland, and he saw one of his old high school friends who had just had, the, his wife had, uh, his friend's wife had just had a baby, and they rode in the presidential limousine from uh, the airport to the site that we were going at, and so the, the baby it was in the, in, the, you know, in the baby seat, and they put that in the limo, and it was the first time 
that a baby seat had ever been in the presidential limousine, ever, in, in the history of the presidency, according to the Secret Service. So the president asked me to, to take a photograph of that, which was a rare occurrence. He usually you know, doesn't make those kinds of requests. But for that one, he wanted to have that documented. So. I look forward to seeing it on Flickr. <laughs> um, uh, this question comes from Pixel Dust on Flickr. Uh, and she wants to know, on Where average. Where do people get these names from? Pixel Dust? Pixel and, Dust. Yeah. You know, there, there are a lot of uh, creative names. But, but Pixel Dust is wondering, on average, how many images do you shoot of the president on any given day? So I probably average between um, 500 on the, on the low end to you know, uh, maybe 1,100 on, on the high end. So somewhere in that range, just depending on the, the president's schedule that day. And then on, on you know, like Inauguration Day, uh, the, the day that health care passed, you know, probably exceeding 1,500 pictures. Uh, this question comes from Shea Cam. Uh, Shea Cam asks, just curious what you enjoy shooting when you're not photographing the president. What would your hobby, sh what's your hobby shooting? Uh, I don't do any hobby shooting right now. I do sleeping when uh, I'm not at work for the most part. So um, the, you know, my background is as a newspaper and magazine photojournalist. And so in, in the past, I've done uh, that kind of work. Uh, I mean, occasionally I've done nature photography, but that, uh, I'm not doing a lot of that right now. I just don't have time. Uh, this question comes from Linda Moore. It just came in on Facebook. She asks, do you have all access, or are there times when you're not allowed to take photos? Uh, I pretty much have open access um, to any meeting that the president has. Um, I, during a one-on-one a -on -one meeting, if he's having a private meeting with someone, I sort of uh, have learned over time what's an appropriate time to stay to let them have their private conversation, but still make sure that, I, that I've gotten good pictures from that meeting. So the one-on-one the -on -one meetings, I tend not to stay as long as uh, you know, the, the bigger, uh, more historic meetings, which I usually stay in for the, for the uh, whole meeting. This question comes from Pasha on Flickr, and she wants to know, or, or he, Padia, Pasha, uh, what are your best tips for getting great, candid photos of people? Uh, well, I think that people have to be uh, comfortable with you. And um, I mean, I think that it's just something that's difficult to explain how you do that. But I think you sort of have to be true to yourself. You know, you have to... Um, blend into your surroundings. Um, you know, usually I'm not engaging the president during meetings or anything like that. I sort of just do my, my thing, I think. And, and as I said, over, over time, people have gotten used to me being around, so it's, it's not usually an issue. But I think, you know, for somebody that's just, goes, just going into it cold, I think you've got to establish some kind of a rapport with your subject so they feel comfortable with your presence. This question comes from Lizzie Cookson, and she asks, uh, Mr. Souza, if you were only allowed to shoot with one lens for the rest of your life, what would you use? I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. No, I, pro the, I probably use um, a 35 millimeter, which is kind of a, a, a semi-wide angle lens. I probably use that lens the most. And then probably the, the lens that I use the second most is a, a, a telephoto lens 135. So those are the two lenses that, um, that I probably use the most. Okay. And I would want both of those with me, not just one. Okay. Well, hopefully that's good enough for you, Lizzie. Um, so we've had a couple of questions come in like this. Uh, recently on the White House blog, you published your, your uh, favorite 10 photos. And there's one really nice moment where the president and first lady are uh, uh, touching hands um, on a rail. And so Donna Toll and a couple of other people have asked, is it difficult capturing inter, uh, intimate moments with the president and first lady? Here's that. So here's the photo. This was, uh, they had gone down to uh, the Gulf Coast 
and we're on a, a, a boat, and I, you know, noticed them uh, touching their hands like that, and I thought that was an interesting photo. Somebody commented that they, they wished the president wasn't wearing a watch. It would have been a better photo. But, you know, that's the way it was. He wears a watch, so that's, that's the reality of the photograph. Uh, I mean, again, I think that they're so used to me being around um, that, um, you know, they sort of just go about about their business, and I try to uh, be um, not intrusive in, when I'm taking pictures, um, and you know, and it leads to moments like this. Okay. Uh if you're just joining us, go to whitehouse.gov slash live. There's a live chat that's happening on Facebook, and we're asking, Pete, a lot of your great questions. This one just came in from Ricky Blanco. He asks, uh, are there times when you will shoot film, or do you ever carry a film body nowadays? I have not yet. I mean, it's, it, there's a possibility that I, I may uh, sh uh, shoot some film uh, at some point during the administration. Um, but the, you know, it's just, the, the, logistically, it just becomes almost a nightmare now because, you know, we'd have to get the film developed and then you'd have to scan in the negative and then uh, it, 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 it almost becomes uh, uh, too much of a lo logistical problem. So maybe at some point, but as yet I have not shot any film. Uh, this question comes from Nada on Flickr. Nada asks, what's the most unexpected thing about your job? Also, what shoes do you usually wear while you're working, and how many pairs have you gone through since you started? <laughs> well, right now I'm wearing my tennis shoes because it's off hours, but uh, during the working day I, I got a pair of Echoes that just were really comfortable shoes. They're you know, more or less dress shoes, but they've got a rubber sole, so they're really comfortable. And uh, I need a new pair of those, because I've kind of worn them down uh, to the point where it's starting to be a little bit noticeable that, that they're worn down. So I need to get a new pair. Um, and what was the first part of the question? What's the most unexpected thing about your job? Oh, the most unexpected thing. You know, I think every day there's something unexpected that happens. Um, the, you know, just like, for instance, in the morning, I, I usually check in with uh, Brian Mosteller and, and Katie Johnson. Um, Katie's the president's secretary, and Brian is, runs Oval Office operations. And usually, Bo comes by for a visit, so that's always nice to see. Bo and I always joke that, you know, he and I are both Portuguese, so we sort of have our little thing going. Okay. Uh, this question comes from Donna Zoll on Flickr. She asks a whole bunch of questions, but I'm just going to ask a couple. Um, how old were you when you first got when you got your first camera? Um, I think I was probably not till I was like 20. I want to say not till I was in college. Okay. And one of her other questions, she has about five, so we'll we can do rapid we'll fire if you want. Rapid yeah. fire. All right. Okay. How did you get this? This is all Donna Zoll. Uh, we're just going to go right through it. How did you get the sweet gig of chief official White House photographer? Oh, see, that's not, you can't that's, do a rapid fire. You can't do that rapid that. fire. <laughs> you could try. So that was um, uh, mostly because I had been working for the Chicago Tribune when uh, Barack Obama became the senator from Illinois in 2005, and I spent a lot of time with him in 2005 because we kind of covered his first year extensively for the Tribune, so I got to know him and his uh, staff in, in 2005. And I think he liked my work, he liked the, the way I worked. Um, so, you know, one thing uh, led to another when he was elected president. Here I am. Okay. We'll just keep running through Donna Zoll. She's got some good ones. Uh, your images always have a thoughtful appreciation for your subjects. Are there some keywords or feelings that you're looking for in your subject matter? Uh, you know, I'm just trying to capture what, uh, what the true sense of what's happening in front of me. I mean, I don't know, know how else to say it. Um, you know, wh whether, you know, I've seen the president in good days and bad days, and I try to, you know, capture that depending on the situation. 
Okay, and beyond documenting your subjects' lives, what element of yourself do you strive to have present in your images? What element of myself? Wow, that's getting a little... It's not, not easy rapid yeah. fire here. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, there's so many things going through my mind when I'm, I'm trying to make pictures. I mean, like, for instance, sometimes um, uh, great photographs can be made because of the lighting. You know, there just happens to be uh, a certain kind of lighting. I mean, one of the things that happens in the Oval Office is the light changes coming through the windows depending on the time of the year. So now that we're getting closer to winter, the sun's a little lower, and it sometimes I can already see that there's, uh, it's starting to get some interesting light in the late afternoon coming in through the back windows in the Oval Office. So I'm aware of those kinds of things. Um, another thing that I, I don't know if this really answers the question, but maybe it'll answer some other questions. Another thing that I try to do is, is, is um, provide a, a variety of images. In other words, sometimes the scene setter is an interesting photograph, and some, sometimes, you know, the close-up. We, we saw the close-up of the hands. So I'll show you this uh, scene setter from the roof of the White House during the 4th of July. So this is, you know, the president's not in this photo. He's actually standing next to me. And I'm up on the roof watching the fireworks with him. Uh, the, the killers, I believe it was, was playing on the South Lawn. And the fireworks started. So it made kind of an interesting scene setter. So I'm trying to keep these kinds of pictures in mind, as well as the ones that you know, maybe show more emotion or more close up, more intimate. Uh, so I'm trying to provide a variety as much as I can. Okay, we're, this, is the, this is the last of Donna Zoll's questions. Oh my gosh. I know, we're, we, we got through them. Uh, what about photography inspires and attracts you to the medium? Uh, I don't, you know, I, th I went to college because I wanted to become a sports writer. And then I found that writing was, was too hard, but I started taking pictures. And to me, it was more fun uh, being able to, to capture a moment that can sort of live on. And, you know, it's hard for me to describe. I just like what I'm doing. And uh, I, I, I love the idea of the still image, that it, it can be instant, instantaneously recognizable. If you think of some of the historic pictures from the last 50 years, you can, a lot of times you can just describe the photo and everybody instantly can draw up in their mind that image. Uh, LBJ getting sworn in on Air Force One, you know, things like that. People know the picture I'm talking about. It's, it, it, it becomes, the, the still image becomes seared in your mind. And uh, so, I don't know, I've just become attractive to uh, capturing the still image. So uh, Donna closed by saying, I could go on, but uh, I'm the only question asker in the, I'm not the only question asker in the world. Thanks for sharing yourself. I love your work. Her all-time favorite picture is the one of Robert De Niro in Bruce Springsteen, uh, the Christmas photo with the president. Oh, well, we'll have to show that because I think I have that here. She calls it magical glee. Oh, maybe I don't have that. I thought I had that. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. So this was a great moment for me, too, because I am a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. And, um, and you know, and how can you not be a fan of Robert De Niro, one of the greatest actors of our times? But this was just uh, the reception before the Kennedy Center honors when both De Niro and Springsteen were honored. So that was, sort of, it was great. It was just a great, uh, so this was an exciting day for me, I have to say, just because I was in there, in not only the president's presence, but in the presence of Bruce and uh, De Niro, so. Okay, we've got a question that's just coming from Facebook. If you're joining us uh, now, go to whitehouse.gov slash live. There's a link to Facebook and you can ask Pete some of your questions live. This one comes from Nate Dean. Nate asks- I don't know any of these people, by the way. You don't know any of these no, people? No, I thought like all my friends would you know, take over the site or something. Oh. But well. whatever. <laughs> next, next, next chat, we'll, uh, we'll email it to your friends. Yeah. Uh, Nate wants to know, what's your biggest challenge photographing the president? Oh, I think the biggest challenge is, is, is you know, trying to make interesting pictures every day. Uh, I mean, the, it, I call it the daily grind when, you know, there's a lot of similarities from meeting to meeting. And so, you know, it's a challenge 
trying to make interesting pictures uh, on a daily basis. So I think that's probably my biggest challenge. Okay. Uh, Marissa Roman asks, this is a question that came in from Flickr, uh, what's a typical day for you? Do you constantly follow the president around daily to all of his meetings? Do you go with him on overseas trips? Has he ever asked you not to photograph something? Um, yes, yes, and no. All right. How's that? That's good. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay Lersima asks, well, he sort of has a statement, and then there's a question. Uh, don't you ever get bored shooting the same kinds of meetings? Uh, handshakes, press conferences, et cetera, over and over again? Almost everything is planned in detail, so there's not much spontaneity. That must be hard for a photojournalist at heart. There's a lot of spontaneity. I mean, I think, as I said, it is a challenge uh, daily to, um, to come up with interesting photos, but, but there's definitely a spontaneity. So let me find an example. This is like on, a, on a, just a, a typical trip. Um, we were in Texas and walking through the locker room, and Marvin Nicholson, the trip director, saw the scale and decided he had to weigh himself. And as he's weighing himself, you can see unbeknownst to him, the president's sticking his foot on the scale and Marvin keeps pushing the lever to the right thinking, oh my God, I've, I've gained a lot of weight. And if you can tell by the people's reaction in the background, everybody is in on the joke except for Marvin. Marvin's the only one that didn't know what was going on. And like this moment, would just, it just sort of happened. You know, this is as spontaneous as you can get. So there are lots of spontaneous moments in, in this job. And it's, you know, I just have to be alert enough to, to capture them. Okay, we've got a question from Flickr member Carly. What's your favorite part of your job? Um, I think, you know, like every, every part of it. I mean, you know, I, um, I get to walk into the White House every day and get to walk into the Oval Office and be in the presence of, of the president and you know, there, there's really every, every part of it is, is, um, is good. I... Okay. Uh, Karen KT, another Flickr member, wants to know, have you ever had a run-in with the president or his staff about getting in there to get a shot? You know, I, I can't say that I have. Um, I, you know, I think early on he was, it, it, he, the fact that I was in every, well, let me go back. Uh, he just wasn't used to uh, being photographed, you know, every day in every meeting because he, you know, he's never, he, he had been a senator and that certainly didn't happen as a senator. So I think it took a little bit of an adjustment for him, but I think now he's so used, like I said earlier, he's so used to me being around that it's, it's really never an issue. I mean, one of the things that happened when he was interviewing candidates for the Supreme Court, there was a lot of sensitivity because they were sneaking the candidates in and they didn't want anybody to know who he was interviewing. And so I explained to the staff, look, I'll make sure nobody sees these photos until he's chosen who his candidate was. So that took a little bit, but not that much. You know, that was actually a fairly easy sell. Okay, uh, we have uh, another question that's coming from the Facebook chat. Linda Moore asks, is there a photo opportunity that you completely missed or regret? Oh, but I'll never talk about those. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, Linda, you're out of luck. I miss, I, you know, occasionally I miss a picture and, you know, it, it, uh, it keeps me up at night, but hopefully it doesn't happen that often. Okay. Um, Anthony, uh, Anthony Schultz asks, uh, so do you try new techniques? or do you stick to tried and true techniques? You said you're always working to make things fresh. Have you gone into a situation with a completely new piece of equipment, a lens, et cetera, just to see how it works? Um, you know, I pr probably the answer to that is I, I stick with the, the tried and what was, how do they describe it? The, uh, the tried and true. Yeah, I probably st stick more with the tried and true. Um, I do, you know, I do try different angles and um, but I like to stick with, I, I primarily use four lenses and I try to stick, stick with those uh, and, and, you know, uh, push those to their limits. Okay. Ryan Thompson asks, 
How do you avoid the staged photo ops that must constantly fall into your lap? Also, what are the, what are the other photojournalists that you look up to? Um, I, you know, I'd say that you know, 90% of, of my work is uh, you know, just capturing spontaneously what occurs. There are some, you know, there are, uh, and maybe 10% is too high a figure, but there are some handshake photos that I do. If, if uh, a staff member is departing, we usually do a family photo, you know, in front of the desk. So there's a fair amount of those routine uh, types of pictures. And I forget what the second part of the question was. Sorry. The, the second uh, part was... Uh, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's fine. Because you're looking it. for the next question. <laughs> right. Who are some other photojournalists that you look oh, up to? Oh, so I mean, you know, I, I, the, the, the photographs, the photographers that I look up to, I'm sure other photojournalists, photojournalists look up to, but, you know, from long ago, uh, W. Eugene Smith, uh, Cartier-Bresson, uh, today, uh, uh, James Knockway, uh, Bill Allard from National Geographic, um, you know, I could go on and on and give you a list of 20 people that I admire, photographers. Okay, this question comes from Jordan Emmett, and Jordan wants to know, clearly you sit, on, sit in on some pretty important meetings. What kind of security clearance process do you have to go through before becoming a White House photographer? Um, you know, you fill out a, a big form, and I, you know, I don't really know the, the, the process, but it, it takes, I think, like six months to, to get your final clearance. And Here you are. Uh, okay, we've got a, a question from Griffin Moores. What has been the most memorable photographic experience you've had while in the White House? Um, I think, you know, just the, the experience in, in uh, um, as a totality. I mean, I just think everything, the, the, the entire experience has been memorable. That's kind of a cop out to that answer, but I mean to that question, but that's sort of the way I feel. Uh, we, this question comes from Paul James 80, a Flickr member. Paul asks, your photography career is astounding and I love your work. That's a statement, the question's coming. Uh, when you decided to go digital and use the 5D Mark II after years of using film, what was your biggest challenge? Do you prefer working with digital or film? Oh, I think now I prefer working with digital. It's, it, it's made, um, th all aspects of, of photography uh, a lot easier in terms of the instantaneous quality of it, being able to um, archive the images almost as, as soon as they're shot. Whereas with film, like I said before, you'd have to get the film processed, then scanned in. So I think digital just makes um, uh, so many aspects of this job a lot easier. Okay, this question comes from Britt Bradley on Flickr. Britt asks, how many people work on the White House photography staff and how are photo assignments handled? Are staff members assigned different subjects for a reason, divided by specialty, simply by schedule? So I have uh, three photographers that, that work with me and um, uh, uh, Chuck Kennedy, Samantha Appleton, and Lawrence Jackson. And uh, Samantha primarily covers the, the First Lady um, Chuck sort of uh, organizes the, the schedule for everybody, and um, and the 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 three of them um, do a really good job at when there's public events, making sure that the 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 best angles are covered for those public events. I mean, I'm sort of with the president coming in at the last minute, and oftentimes at those big events, my angle is not going to be uh, the best one. So, for historical documentation purposes, um, you know, anytime we're doing big events at the White House, it's so important that we have those those main angles uh, covered for the for the uh, archive. Okay, this question comes from Stephen Blewett. What's your ISO in the Oval Office? Um, ISO is film speed for you lay laymen out there. Um, so in the Oval Office, I use anywhere from uh, ISO 400 to 800. So again, depending on the light coming through the windows in the Oval Office. Okay. 
Um, we just, we're almost out of time. We're going to take a couple more questions. Karen French, who's in the Facebook chat, wants, uh, she says, I love the photo you took of Bo in the snow in front of the White House. Is he easy to shoot? Uh, Bo is not easy to shoot. <laughs> Because, let's see if I can find that photo. I don't know if this is the, the one, but this was, um, this was, uh, I'm trying to think, this is actually during one of the snowstorms this last year. And uh, I was outside uh, just wandering around the White House grounds trying to make some interesting photos. And, and Bo was out there with uh, one of the groundskeepers. So as I started walking around the uh, the, the grounds, Bo started following me just because he wanted to play in the snow with somebody. And um, so, so I made this uh, photo of him. But Bo is hard to shoot, mostly because he's, a, he's a, a black dog. And for, I mean, black in terms of color. And it's hard to get good detail sometimes in, in him because of that, because he's so dark. Um, and I think it helped in this case that he had a lot of snow on him. So. Okay, uh, this is going to be our last question. Jake Bloom asks, what kind of scrutiny do your shots undergo before they're shown to the public? Um, I mean, I think I described the, the, uh, the process of, of uploading pictures to Flickr, which is, you know, Alice Cabrini, the photo editor, will choose images, I'll okay it, uh, or, you know, sometimes we'll go back and find something different. And then we uh, just get Josh Ernest in the press office to, uh, to sign off, and, and that's it. Now, there's instances like, for instance, in, with national security meetings, we've got to make sure that there's no uh, uh, sensitive paperwork showing. Um, and so occasionally, I'll run pictures by the national security team just to make sure that there's not a classified document uh, something like that. But usually it's just uh, myself, Alice, and, and Josh that, that, that make the decisions on, on what pictures get out. Okay, I, we're going to take one more if you don't okay. mind. Uh, this is a, a great one that came in on Flickr and, and then uh, we'll uh, finish up the chat. But this comes from uh, another unique username, Bad Bad Leproy Brown. Uh, Pete says, I like all the gear talk. We could really talk about gear until we're blue. Um, but I'd love to hear more about your perceived impact of photographs. Are you aware of significant changes that have been made in policy or relations from your photographs? Or what's the most notable impact you're aware of from your photo that your photography at your job, at this job, has made? Um, thanks, and if you're ever in the San Francisco Bay Area, he'd love to help out. I, I mean, I think others need to answer that question. Uh, I'll just say this. I mean, I think that this administration has gone to great lengths to provide a lot more transparency. The, the fact that a lot of these behind the scenes photographs are being uh, released to the public now as opposed to 20 years from now is extraordinary. I mean, it's never really happened before. Um, and that's a decision that the administration made from you know, almost day one. Now, in terms of what impact that's having, you know, I don't know. I mean, other people, um, probably have opinions on that and are in a better position to make those opinions. So I, you know, for me, I'm too insulated to really know what impact the, the photographs are having. Okay, well thank you so much, Pete, for joining us. Thanks for everyone that's online that asked your questions on Flickr. Um, this video will be posted shortly, so if you missed any of it, you can check it out on whitehouse.gov. I encourage you to check out the Flickr photo stream uh, flickr.com slash white house or go to whitehouse.gov slash photos to uh, review some to check out more of Pete's work and some of the images that he showed you today so thanks and have a good night thanks